My name is Gary Golden. I'm a professional futurist based in Brooklyn, New York. So there, there are many things that are changing in the future landscape of technology. Uh, and I think a, a category for arts educators uh, to pay attention to and to learn more about is one of natural user interfaces. Natural user interfaces. Uh, today we live in a world, it's called the GUI world, G-U-I. It's graphical user interface. And it's a world in which we click on a mouse, touch a screen, we're looking at graphical representations. And the future of a natural user interface is one of speech, one of movement, gesture. So one of the most disruptive technology platforms out there today is the Microsoft Connect. Microsoft Connect. And this is, this, this is Microsoft's way of getting back in the game. Uh, and what Microsoft Connect does is that it uh, uses infrared technology to understand how you are moving in the physical world. And it can capture that movement and then be used against some other experience. One, one of the, the uh, uh, fascinating aspects of Connect is that Microsoft has decided to open source the API. So Microsoft has provided the, the inner code of how Connect works that will enable software developers to build other applications on top of that platform. So we can expect that uh, uh, today, moving forward, we will see more gesture movement-based technology experiences that will find themselves probably into the home first and then the classroom. So right now there are artists in the world that are hacking the connect. We have dancers, we have people that are teaching people how to paint using Connect. Musicians have a, a fantastic opportunity uh, using this Connect platform because it is so movement and gesture focused. Uh, it should not be seen or promoted as a replacement to the music teacher. Uh, it is simply a tool to uh, extend the learning uh, and uh, uh, you know, help the student become a better musician. But you can imagine a world where, you know, Bo, you know, Bo is, is, is being watched by the Kinect device, and if that arm and that elbow are not in the right position, the Kinect will signal to the student, you've got to bring it up or down. Uh, and again, whether or not these tools are embraced by teachers in the classroom, uh, they're certainly likely to find themselves into the, into the home uh, within the next few years. And another, uh, uh, another natural user interface uh, is, is the world of uh, wearables. They call them wearables. It's essentially taking textile uh, cloth material and integrating sensors and electronics uh, to create some sort of digital experience. So we see today, we see uh, uh, dancers and artists that are, that are at that intersection of, of wearable digital technology creating new types of experiences for dance uh, and theater uh, that allows individuals to see new forms of movement and data visualization based off of these wearable technologies. So imagine, you know, the, 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 the connect or wearable experience. Uh, 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 you know, a, 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 an eighth grader goes and sees a, a theater performance and falls in love with a character and, 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 and really identifies with a character. And you could imagine a near future within the next decade where they would go home or they would go to a cafe, a third place, an arts environment, and be able to recreate that scene. And instead of having the actor perform, they perform it themselves. So by using these, these connect and wearable systems, projection systems, they are able to basically recreate that environment and perform uh, the scene themselves. So then the second piece of the natural user interface is the role of voice and conversation. Uh, in the world of, of consumer applications, we see the Apple Siri, which is a, uh, a personal assistant, an agent that you ask questions to and it responds in complete sentences. But the, the real uh, uh, platform to watch as the gold standard is the IBM Watson. IBM Watson, this is a software program that defeated two human competitors in, in the world of Jeopardy. Uh, and this software program is, is essentially, it's a knowledge, knowledge in a box. Uh, and Watson is able to 
uh, engage the user in a conversation. It understands the nuances of, of human uh, language. It understands skepticism it, or irony. It understands sarcasm. Uh, so we now see Watson being brought into the workplace. Watson is coming to work. Uh, we see Watson going into the healthcare industry to help doctors give better assessments based off of information that might not exist inside the doctor's own head. Watson helps that process. But the, the moment we need to watch for is when Watson comes to the classroom. When a Watson type uh, natural uh, language interface is brought into the classroom with the student. So a few years ago teachers were uh, uh, really kind of taken back that students were using the internet to do their homework, that they were googling the questions and the answers. Uh, but in the future we can imagine a world in which a Watson-like personal assistant uh, is part of the everyday life of young people uh, in our world. So then from an arts education standpoint you have to ask yourself what's the opportunity? How can arts educators use this type of conversation agent to engage people in learning more about the arts? So let's say a young person goes to a symphony performance on a Friday night uh, outside of school. Well then after that performance they can ask that Watson uh, uh, system questions about the instruments, about the composer, about the building that the performance was held in. And then two years later that same performance is being done by a different symphony in a different city and that young person finds themselves in that place. Watson will then be able to queue up that memory and connect those two experiences. So we can look at Watson in many ways, much like this learning management system. It provides the continuity of learning across these different arts experiences. Watson is truly in the workplace. It is being piloted across uh, a few healthcare industries. But for the arts world, we need to ask ourselves, you know, what is our Watson? What is our Watson? So will arts educators, will educators in general, uh, create their own platforms? Just like, you know, 20 years ago we couldn't have imagined that we would need to create a website for our classroom and now we use websites to communicate with our teachers, with, uh, or we use websites to communicate with parents, etc. Uh, can you imagine five, ten years from now that arts educators will need to create some sort of Watson type application? Quite possible, quite possible.